maintaining best practices. So it's being friends also by giving people credit, giving link credit, always link to people, always thank people that send you things. Always, always, always link to the source if you can find it. And do a little research, finding out what the source is if you decide to post something. Like, because you know, people will try to get credit for things that were actually created and discovered by someone else. So do a little research if you decide to repost things. Um, but always, 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 just it's, it's a two-way handshake with everyone that comes across your path online. Um, and that's really important. That's part of best practices, actually crediting people, involving them in your media. Um, and reputation is really everything. It is worth more than money when it comes down to it. And we've been watching, all of us I'm sure, have been watching online culture now to the point that we, we've seen people completely flame out with their reputations and lose everything by being total douchebags online. It happens, so don't be that douchebag. <laughs> Um, be courteous. Don't expect things in return. Um, one of the big mistakes that I see is that people will be like, I friended you on Twitter, why didn't you friend me? Never, never expect things in return from people, because that's a really douchey thing to do. And that's what a lot of people have been doing to try and accumulate numbers and accumulate this. And it's, uh, it doesn't really work that way. Um, also, never spam people. Just don't do it. And if you do, apologize. Um, if you have a press release to send out, make sure everyone that you're sending it to actually wants to get it. Um, it's just amazing, like, especially in the sex arena, it's just, it's so out of control. I got, this, I got non-consensually, I get non-consensually put on these fucking spam lists all the time. And the one that I like is these two people who are now deciding to, um, to teach sex education classes on how to be a sex educator. And I don't know who they are. And they're like, they're like, does everyone come to you for advice? Are you the girl in high school that everyone asked about sex? You know, and then they're like teaching these workshops, and I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. Like, yeah, we're, we're special and different, but, and it's, and it's because I got put on this list, I want to ridicule them, because they didn't ask me before putting me on the list. So, it, it kind of works like that. Like, especially with people who are influencers that, you've, that you're going to get to know, and that you're going to network with, it's just like, ask them, be personal. Um, like I said earlier, be ready to have ideas and things stolen from you. The thing is, stick around long enough and everyone will see that it's actually been you doing this stuff the whole time. And that's really the, the need of that, is that if you do something, don't dump it three months later because people will forget that you did this thing for three months. When you do something, really make a long-term commitment. It's a long-term relationship, whatever it is that you're gonna decide to do, your end goal. And it's just like, okay, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be here for a long time and make all of your decisions always looking forward, always thinking about the future. And that goes for your relationships to always, you know, dealing with people who rip you off and don't source you and things like that. You just can quietly say, hey, I was the source of this. And your readers, your followers, the people that know you will know that you're the source of that and they won't forget because the people that stick around will remember your reputation. Um, yeah, um, what else? Attention is earned. That was another point that I wanted to really talk about. Um, attention, like, people talk about, like, I go to these tech conferences and people talk about the wisdom of crowds. Not so wise. <laughs> Trust me. Um, attention is really something that is, it's so fleeting on the internet. And people will come across something and they'll be like, shiny, and then they'll go away. And you really have to do stuff to kind of earn their attention. And by that, I mean, not just like being genuine in spirit and offering up things of value and giving things away, but also doing, just basically being present and being honest and also like owning up to your mistakes and having conversations with people. And, you know, especially with teens, it's really, the thing about teens is that they, they just don't care. Like they're, they're gonna come and if you're entertaining, they're gonna stick around. And if you're entertaining, they're gonna come back. But if they, you don't entertain them, they're just gonna fuck off and not care. So teens, especially as a market, are like they want fun stuff and they want to keep it coming. So when you decide what your thing of value is, I, I have to urge you to keep delivering on it because you know to get like the teen market and to get them and to keep them, it's like it's a, it's a contest in earning their their attention. And once you have it, they'll be faithful. Trust me. I, I, I hang out with people that were in high school when they started reading my blog. Like it's pretty amazing. Um, yes, create profiles, this is a hack. Create profiles 
on sites that you love, even if they're not about sex. Voila, create a profile on TechCrunch, create a profile on Gawker, create a profile on a review profile on Amazon that has an about you page. And what this does is this takes what you're doing and your statement, it boils it into a personality and puts it into a profile on another site. It is another way that people can find you that doesn't necessarily have to do with sex. And this is especially, this can be an especially fun hack, I think, for groups and organizations. So for instance, Spissy could have a Spissy profile on Amazon where they write reviews on books. Write enough reviews, you become a highly acclaimed review writer and a respected review writer. And what that does is that basically creates an organizational resource that you can link to from your site, but also the people go, oh, Spissy reviewed this book, here's a written description of the book on Amazon, and then they click on your profile, it can bring them back to Spissy. So think about, think about that because it's really, really effective. Um, yes, no matter what you do, be honest, absolutely. The thing is, when you get out online and you move around, people will be able to tell when you're bullshitting and people will be able to tell when you're full of shit and people will be able to tell if you're trying to just hook them to get back to your site or if you're trying to link spam people or anything like that. Um, and also be honest about who it is and what you do. And this is especially going to be important when you deal with websites in terms of service stuff. Um, because, and I'll get to this in a minute, you always, always, always want to follow the rules on the various sites that you're on. So just don't ever try to bait and switch any organization. We are here because we love to break the rules. But if we play within their rules, we can be more subversive. So be honest about who you are and what you do when you do these things. Be transparent about your actions. Like I said earlier, own your mistakes. If you ever get into a fight online, definitely give me a call. Um, <laughs> every time, like every time you go online, it's like going out of the house, you're gonna encounter people that wanna fuck with you, you're probably going to get you know, trolled, you're gonna run into people who wanna get in fights with you. Um, and this ties back into reputation. And when that happens, it's really important to never, ever, ever lose your cool, because everyone online that messes with you is trying to make you lose your cool. They're trying to humiliate you, they're trying to demean you, not in the hot ways, in the ways that are really not hot, that make you stay up at night and cry. Um, not in a good way either. Um, <laughs> um, but seriously, it's like, um, you're gonna find yourself in these situations that are that are trying and difficult on you. And you're also gonna find yourself in fights, and you're gonna find yourself in arguments. And I wanna encourage you to always take the high road when this stuff happens to you. Um, don't get down and dirty, don't pull any dirty tricks. This is more about the transparency thing. If you find yourself in an argument online, if you find yourself with people attacking you online, take the conversation back to your space, which is your blog, or your Facebook page, or whatever it is you've decided is your home base, and reshape the argument with facts and have the last word that way. It's always the best thing. So a note really quick about terms of service on websites. Um, and this is something that, that we encounter a lot as people who have the word sex somewhere associated with their names online. Um, make sure that you don't run afoul of sites terms of service. Um, and there's a really good reason for that. And it's not because um, I'm one of those people who's like, um, Oh God, don't you hate those people who are like, I'm gonna be a lawyer so I can change the system from inside. And you're just like, that works to this point. Um, no, it's because you can be more subversive when you get into these systems. Um, and if you play by their rules, you can stay in their systems longer. So t check out the TOS on sites that you sign up for and make sure that you follow them, um, whatever you do. Um, we are talking about sex. So, and we will always be talking about sex one way or another. So understand that people are going to bring a lot of presumptions to you as a website user. Um, they're going to expect you to break their website's rules because you have sex associated with you. That is just the unfortunate way of the world right now. Um, even if you're not a porn blogger, even if you're not a sex worker, um, even if you, all you have is a text blog, when you go on Flickr and people look at your bio, if they see sex on there, um, Nine times out of ten, like the websites are going to think that you are there to break their rules. Mostly that you're going to bring an unwanted surprise to their sites. So the best thing that you can do is assure people that you're not going to do that and just never ever do that, basically, so you don't get a reputation for it. So those were the main points, and I'm going to put these all in a blog post after this. <coughs>